All right, I'm here with Dave Lewis, uh, otherwise known as Gadiga, and uh, Javad Malik, otherwise known as Javad. And uh, we're standing out in the hallway here at Black Cat, trying to figure out uh, something to talk about. So I'm going to hit these guys up with what, what, what's good about Black Cat. What, what's going right here? Uh, you know, it gets bigger and bigger every year. It's moving next year. What, what, what does Black Cat do right? Black Hat does right is it gives us an opportunity for hackers around the world to descend upon a common location to mingle and chat and exchange stories uh, in anonymity and uh, the privacy uh, and bound by the unspoken rules of Black Hat. As they stand inside a casino with a camera every two feet. The thing that I really find is um, Gattaca has been around on the scene far, far longer than I. Uh, don't be fooled by his boyish young looks. And he is a man of oh, great, <laughs> he is a man of great stature and standing within the community. However, he hides behind a handle called Gattaca and he doesn't ever put his face out there. So spending time at conferences like this. I get more recognition than he does because everyone knows my, my ugly mug. Mutual Appreciation Society today? Apparently. I want that back. <laughs> <laughs> So now, you know, Black Hat's uh, huge, very well established, but what's, what's wrong with these conferences when they get to this size? When they get to an unwieldy size, it becomes a little bit difficult, and I mean, they do a great, they did a really great job of, uh, you know, calling through the amount of content that was submitted, and I saw a lot of very good talks. As, as a speaker proctor, one of the things I do is help, you know, facilitate the speakers, make sure they get to and from the rooms in a timely fashion, and as a result, I get to see all these talks, and some of which I wouldn't have normally gone to for no good reason other than it just didn't seem to be a subject that would resonate with me at the time. But then, by the virtue of being in those talks, I saw some great content. Um, so the problem is, you have all this great content that's submitted, and being able to parse through that, it's really you know, a Herculean effort for them to do. And also the sheer volume is, you outgrow a place. For example, Black Hat has outgrown Caesars, and now they're going to be moving to Mandalay Bay next year. Simply just... In, at what point does it become too big? Uh, RSA? <laughs> that one, yes. <laughs> okay, so then that takes us back to, to, to B-Sides. And both of you guys are, are very involved with the B-Sides community. Uh, you know, started off very, and, and most, the majority of them still, I think, what, 110, Jack said now, uh, events this year. Brand new one, actually, coming up in uh, October in Toronto, yeah. B-Sides Toronto. And for the most part, I mean, Vegas is probably the biggest one. San Francisco is awfully big. But a couple other ones are getting big, too. Are, are London is pretty cool. B-Sides London, I had the opportunity to go there this year, and it was fantastic. Um, except for that one talk where it kept going peanut butter jelly time every couple of months. <laughs> yeah, besides, I, I, I find it's the, it's kind of like the middle-aged person's sport. It's like, you know, like people they, who are really active in their teenage years, they get to a certain age and then they want to play something like golf, where it's respectable, it's not loutish, and it's uh, not very, it, and you can play it with your friends. And, and that's what B-Sides is, it's, it's not a typical hacker con, it's not something that where you get a lot of punks around, script kiddies who want to show off. And it's not commercial either. It's not like vendors trying to, you know, force force their messages down your throat. It's one where civilized people get together, talk in civilized manners. They want to learn from each other. The atmosphere is fantastic. I don't think you can uh, replicate that that community feeling that you get from B sides, and that's what B sides is all about. And um, for me, it's, it's like my rocking chair. I love going there, sitting down, interacting with people in between, and coming to to Black Hat, which which has its own space. And like Dave alluded to, Sensei. Um, um, Dave uh, alluded to earlier. Um, the, one of the benefits of Black Hat uh, getting to this size is it, it gives that level of credibility in, in the wider public eye. So, you know, hey, there's like, what, 5,000, 10,000, whatever. People coming down to this place, and then there's talks that get a lot of buzz, and they get picked up by the, by the mainstream media. That's something that, you know, you can't get with a small con or a niche con. And these aren't always radically really new concepts. There's stuff that we've, in the industry, been aware of for a long time. You know, GSM, you know, phones might have vulnerabilities, or Wi-Fi's got uh, vulnerabilities. This stuff, we, we theoretically, we've floated around for a long time. But when a researcher comes to Black Hat and presents, 
presenting it, the level of exposure it gets picked up is far way above and beyond that we can get it anywhere else. And that, that's where I think we can really make a difference. Where we still probably fail as a community is communicating that message in, a, in, a, in an effective manner that it's not sensationalized. Like, you know, Whoa, look at this, man. They, they're talking about hackers can sit in a shed and take over every cell phone in the country. Well, no, it's not quite like that. You know, we, we, there's still some ways that, that we, we can improve that, but you know, I think that's one of the key things about having a, a large conference. And, and typically, the, exactly that is that the press will pick up on the attack of the day, whatever the flavor of the day is, and they tend not to look at the defense side of things. And the defenders, that's the hard job, because attacker only has to be worried once. Defender has to be right every time. Okay, and then that brings us to there's DEF CON also. So um, having all three events stacked up in one week, I mean, is that a little more convenient? Does it help keep the costs down? Does it make it more attractive? It, it is convenient to a certain extent, but it also is incredibly draining, uh, simply just on the sheer ruling aspect of you know going through all these talks, meeting all these people, um, something as simple as the hallway track, which I tend to get the most value out of talking to all these people that, like him, that I only get to see every once in a while at a conference, that whole transcontinental thing. Um, but yeah, I've lost my train of thought. Crazy train going off the rails. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, last question. The best thing to happen this week for you, uh, best memory, funniest thing. But what, what are you taking home? What's the story you're taking home from this week? Turn the camera off and I'll tell you what he said. <laughs> <laughs>